And that's when the Prophet said, وَفُتِّحَتْ أَبْوَابُ الْجَنَّةِ فَلَمْ يُغْلَقْ مِنْهَا بَابٌ The gates of paradise are opened, and not a single gate of paradise is closed to you. Not one gate of paradise will be closed to you. What does that mean? There's a particular gate of Jannah for those who fast and who excel in their fasting. And it's called Babur Rayyan. It's a very special gate of paradise that, that is reserved for the fasting and for those who excel in their fasting. Babur Rayyan. But the Prophet ﷺ is saying that when Ramadan comes around, all of those gates start calling you. The gate of prayer, the gate of charity, the gate of generosity, the gate of good behavior, the gate of silatul rahim, of establishing good ties with you and your family members. All of these gates are open to you. What that means is that in these seasons of mercy, al Hafid ibn Rajab rahimahullah comments on this very beautifully. In Ramadan, the usual good deeds that you would do are rewarded unusually. <laughs> All right. So the usual good that you were doing anyway are rewarded unusually. As the narration of Imam Zuhri rahimahullah, a tasbih, a subhanallah in Ramadan is worth a thousand times than it is outside of the month of Ramadan. So your usual good deeds are rewarded unusually, but then you have an unusual capacity to do good deeds as well. It's twofold. You're able to do good deeds that you would not be able to do throughout the entire year. Allah opens up those doors for you, opens up those influences for you. You're able to pray more in this month than you can pray throughout the entire year. You're able to read more than you can read throughout the entire year. You're able to make, to make more dua, to supplicate more than you're able to make throughout the entire year. So the idea is now, just as the only, the only bad habits that I'm suffering from in Ramadan are the waning, weakening bad habits that I have to relinquish permanently as I get into this month. But then what I need to do is salvage the good that I had, because it's easier to do them and more rewardable to do them, and then take on new habits that it's going, that's going to propel me once I get past this smooth patch, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees me through it. So I have to ask myself, if the usual good deeds that I was doing, if I'm maintaining them and putting more quality in them, and then the unusual quantity of good deeds that I'm doing now, if there is anything of it that I can plan to take with me for the journey beyond. Because that's really what Ramadan is about. The influences have been set. The stage has been set. And essentially what the Prophet ﷺ mentions next in this hadith is that Allah will give you the perfect storm of mercy. Ramadan is a perfect storm of mercy. Forgiveness of sins, removing the bad influences, removing the shayateen that promote those bad influences, not the human shayateen, they're still around in full force, but at least the jinn shayateen, maradatul jinn, restraining them, restraining the influences, opening up the doors for good deeds, rewarding your usual good deeds unusually, and then exposing you to an unusual quantity of good deeds. But at the end of the day, even with that perfect storm, you have to move and you have to run. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not run for you. And that's an important concept. If it wasn't important, the Prophet ﷺ would not mention it in the way that he does. At that point, as you're on this path and you're able to move now and run at a pace that you're not able to run before. Yunadi munadin ya baghi al khair aqbil. At that point, a caller calls out to you and says, O oh, seeker of good, come forth. Come forth. Let me say one thing very clearly. Throughout the year, you're not supposed to take on a set of good deeds that you're not going to be able to maintain. Because أَحَبُّ الْأَعْمَالِ إِلَى اللَّهِ أَدْوَامُهَا وَإِنْقَالِ The most beloved of deeds to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are the consistent ones even if they're small. But Ramadan is not a time for moderation with good deeds. It's not moderate to spend the entire night awake in the last 10 nights, worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with no break and pitch a tent in the masjid the way the Prophet ﷺ used to and completely force himself. The Prophet ﷺ condemned people for doing that outside of Ramadan. 
because it was a lack of moderation. So all the talk of consistency, let's leave it for the last khutbah in Ramadan, inshallah. Right now, rush. Take on what you can. Expose yourself. The Prophet said, Expose yourself to the, these birds of mercy that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends your way. Any good you see, just jump at it. Don't think twice about it. Don't think, am I going to be able to keep this up next week? No, this is Ramadan. This is the time you push yourself. This is the time you ex exhaust yourself in doing good. And yes, throughout you're thinking, what of this can I continue after the month? Because there are so many things that I thought were impossible that I'm now finding are actually very possible. I used to think I didn't have time to do all this. I used to think this wasn't attainable. And now I'm attaining it on a daily basis. What am I doing? Allah wants you to think about that. But for now, Ya baghi al khair aqbil. Oh, he who wants to do good, jump to it, run to it, immerse yourself into it. I'm not telling you to approach good deeds with moderation in Ramadan. Approach it excessively, because this isn't a usual month, so it should not have a usual reception. After Ramadan, please don't be in the masjids every night between Isha and Fajr. That's not moderate. And yes, you need to sleep. The Prophet ﷺ, after the month of Ramadan, would sleep more. Now, those bloodshot eyes that you have in the day, and that fatigue that you have, you have a Lord that is looking at you in those moments and showering you with mercy as He sees you that way. Allah wants to see you that way right now. That's why the Prophet ﷺ was always generous. And in fact, his generosity would not be considered moderation for us on his usual days. But in the month of Ramadan, it was like a blowing wind. It was indiscriminate. That's the way the ulama describe it. Like the Prophet ﷺ coming through your city is like a hurricane coming through of khair, of generosity. It's just not, it's not going to spare anything that's in front of it in terms of its generosity. Because in Ramadan, Ya baghi al khair aqbid, rush to it. So you know what? Push yourself. And when you feel like you have the capacity to push yourself a little further, you've gotten past a certain number of raka'at and qiyam, and you think you can push yourself more, you're feeling like, you know what? I'm not as tired as I was in the first few nights of Ramadan. Then push yourself. Don't say, well, am I going to be able to keep this up next week? No, push yourself and pray those extra raka'at. Squeeze yourself with that khair, with that good in this month of Ramadan. Because there's no other time that is like it. And the Prophet ﷺ says, وَيُنَادِ مُنَادٍ And another caller calls out, وَيَا بَاغِيَ الْشَرِّ أَقْصِرْ And O seeker of evil, stop short. Now you could read that hadith and you can think to yourself that this is speaking to the one who is malicious. Actually it's speaking to the one who's persisting in sin. That now is the time to stop. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is calling out to you and has reduced the influences. Stop that evil now. Do whatever it takes to put yourself, to put a distance between you and that evil. And the way to really think about this is the powerful image that Allah gives us on the Day of Judgment. That when one of us sees their sins on the Day of Judgment, يَوَدُّ لَوْ أَنَّ بَيْنَهَا وَبَيْنَهُ أَمَدًا بَعِيدًا You would wish that there was this huge distance between you and those sins. You would want to put a gulf between you and those sins. Do that now as you're becoming more aware. What can I do to distance myself? Not just quit this bad habit now. What are the barriers I can put in place while those influences are there so that I can put a distance between me and that sin? The Prophet ﷺ said that whoever fasts one day of Ramadan or one day of fasting, sincerely seeking the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah puts a distance between him and hellfire, his face and hellfire, a journey of 70 years. What's the distance that I can put between those bad habits and me, so that I can continue after Ramadan and not worry about those bad habits? And then the Prophet ﷺ said, وَلِلَّهِ عُتَقَاءُ مِنَ النَّارِ وَذَلِكَ كُلُّ لَيْلَةً and Allah redeems people from the fire, and that is every single night of Ramadan. The biggest mistake we make in Ramadan is we gear up for a part of Ramadan that we might not even live to see. Every day of Ramadan is an opportunity. Every day of Ramadan is its own unique race. 
Every time you take that last sip of water at suhoor, up until you take that first sip of water at iftar, you have a new race every day to be amongst those that Allah has included from al utaqa from those who are redeemed. Those who have attained what we seek from this entire month. And the Prophet ﷺ said in another hadith, also authentic, وَيُزَيِّنُ اللَّهُ الْجَنَّةَ كُلِّ يَوْمٍ فِي رَمَضَانِ فَيَقُولْ تَزَيَّنِي يُوشِكُ عِبَادِيَ الصَّالِحُونَ أَنْ يُلْكُ عَنْهُمُ الْمَأُونَةَ وَالْأَذَى وَيَصِيرُ إِلَيْكَ That Allah beautifies paradise every day in Ramadan and He says to it, beautify yourself for soon my anticipating righteous servants, my anticipating righteous servants will shed their hardships and griefs and enter into you. So your Jannah gets more beautiful every day in Ramadan. How are you decorating your home every single day in Ramadan? Treat every single day as a race. And expose yourselves to those births of mercy. Want to keep your children busy while they gain beneficial knowledge this Ramadan? We have the perfect solution. Download the One for Kids TV app, which features lots of fun and educational videos and songs your children will enjoy. All the content is authentic and music free. Available for download from these platforms or visit www.oneforkids.tv.